and I'm Michelle Clark with Rainbow Environmental Services, providing greener possibilities for you. And today I'm so excited to be here to tell you how easy it is to fill your blue recycling cart. At Rainbow, we celebrate Earth Day every day because at Rainbow, on our 20-acre green campus, we're collecting and bailing 57 different recycling commodities for your convenience. So today I just want to talk to you and thank you for uh, being interested in knowing what goes in the blue today. So let's start with a few different things. Paper. All paper is recyclable. Every single solitary piece of paper that you could come across. Uh, it can have tape on it, marker, paint, glue, stickers. Anything can be on it so long as it tears. That's the big scientific test that I would like for you to perform for you to know if that paper goes in recycle. And the benefit of doing that is to know that every ton of paper you recycle saves 17 trees. And what do we need the trees for? Well, if you were here a few weeks ago, it was over 100 degrees. We need the trees for shade and not for your stinking paper. So please remember to recycle it. And let's go to plastic. Years ago, I get all these questions all the time because years ago, mm, let's see, 1999, 2000, only one and two number plastics were recyclable. Today, there's seven and all seven are recyclable. And we encourage you to remember to recycle all of your plastic bottles, all of your plastic wrap, and we'll go through the numbers as quickly as we possibly can. Number one, a number one is a P-E-T-E, -E, and usually it's a beverage container or this plastic container or a fruit container could be a nut jar, any plastic that has a number one on it. And do you know how to recognize where the number is on a recyclable plastic? Forgot to tell you that. It's in the recycle symbol. Only on the plastics will you find the recycle symbol with the number inside. And each number is representative of the kind of chemicals that they use to form that particular plastic. So number two, HDPE. And this is a number two plastic. So. Let me just talk about the three R's really quick. This is one of the ones that we want to remind you. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Reduce your waste in the first place. For me, this was a very, very wasteful purchase. This is a plastic, a fake plastic container with fake plastic um, lemon juice in it when it would have been a lot cheaper and a lot more sustainable if they'd have just bought eight lemons. You could have eaten the lemons, could have made lemonade, you could have made yourself a face mask, you could have done anything. And at the end of it, you could have made potpourri, it would have been great. But no, now you got this, and luckily for you, it goes in our recycle pr program. But you could have avoided that in the first place. Number three, let's see, what's a number three? Number three is a PVC. So you're familiar with, I'm sure, PVC, PVC piping. But it could also be in a package like this. This is a number three. Can you see that recycle symbol with the number three in it, John? Right there. So only the plastics will have it, the recycle symbol with the number in it. And PVC is a, is a big one. Usually um, residential programs don't allow for the PVC to be in there because usually it's not very much. Um, usually it is the pipes that they're talking about. But there are some things that are being created with the number three. So they are allowing it. Uh, we do allow it in our program. And we're so glad to do that. Again, talking about the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. First, reduce your waste in the first place. The second, opportunity to reuse something or donate is an awesome idea. There's tons of charities out there that could benefit from you and your goods that are in pretty good shape. If not, then you recycle. And we're going to teach you how to fill that blue to the very top every single day. So now we're on to number four. So number four is an LDPE. And someone asked me, just today, can I recycle my newspaper sleeve, that plastic sleeve that the newspaper comes in? And my big happy answer was yes, it's a number four plastic. So number four, and yes, you can recycle your newspaper sleeves that so greatly, they graciously put that in so they don't get wet. This one is one that comes, I think, um, 
a couple of the mail express companies use it's a number for commercial envelope but again if you're in your office and you see that the recycle symbol is on this plastic and it has a number in it, number four, please remind everybody in your office too to recycle that number four plastic. Oftentimes people just forget this packaging from a case of water is recyclable as well. People often forget. For some reason they just think that, I don't know, the, the usual kind of plastics are the only ones that can be recycled and that's normally just water bottles and I don't know what else, but they, they forget that all kinds of plastic. And if you're, if you're unsure, like I have a couple of plastics. Um, I'll tell you what I have. I have an egg noodle bag, two bags. One is a name brand, and one is a grocery store brand. They're both the same exact bag. One has a number seven in the recycle symbol, and one doesn't have it at all. So in that case, I tell you to use your best judgment. If you clearly know that it's plastic, we ask that you please put it in your recycle container. Years ago, we used to tell you, when in doubt, throw it out, no longer. Now we tell you, when in doubt, put it in your recycle. When it comes across the sort line, if we determine that we don't have a market for it, then we'll deal with it there. But normally, nine times out of 10, everything that you put in your recycle container can be recycled and we do have a secondary market for it. So we appreciate you putting that stuff in there. So number fives are usually to-go containers um, or reusable food containers or yogurt cups. Yogurt cups are number fives. And number six, um, someone asked me the other day too, <laughs> are CDs recyclable? and the case. Yes, both of them are a hard number six plastic. So the CD itself as well as the CD case. And the CD case is up here somewhere. Um, number seven. So sevens can be a variety of plastics and number seven is considered an other. That's the, they don't have a formula name. It is considered other and that's because it's a, a mixture of all the resins put together. So it's a mutt plastic. So it could be a film plastic, it could be a hard plastic. Uh, and I think this, this one is a number seven. It's a film plastic. Um, sometimes it's cups, uh, the drinking cups, the plastic drinking cups. They're usually number six and a number seven. Um, but it's important that you know <laughs> that all the plastics have a number in the recycling symbol. So people ask me, styrofoam, what about styrofoam, Michelle? What do we do with it? Well, in our program, it's accepted. It is a number six plastic. It's, it's been formed into a foam, um, but we do accept it. And the reason why we accept it is because we have finally found um, a buyer that accepts it, even though we accept it in a commingled program. Most of the time, we couldn't find a buyer for it because we do allow for you to commingle your recyclables, and they may become impaled, the, the styrofoam, with some of the glass that we allow you to put in there like this, and they uh, frown upon it because they can't make beverage containers out of it anymore. But we did find uh, a market for it where they make crown molding and picture frames out of it. So the next time you pick up a picture frame, you might just be buying one of your own recycled styrofoam products, uh, which is a great, great um, story from styrofoam to a uh, picture frame. And then most of the time we ask, that you understand that in addition to reducing, reusing, and recycling, that there's a business perspective that we want you to be remembered of too. So because it's the law in the state of California that every municipality has to recycle or divert, uh, we call it recycling because that's what we do to divert uh, the waste, has to divert 50% of their waste. Everybody has to. And so we have to come up with creative solutions in order to get to that um, goal and keep it going so that we will we'll never regress. As a matter of fact, they're, they're coming up with uh, additional legislation that will increase that diversion number. So we just have to keep moving forward. So we're always looking for what things and ways to add more to your recycle cart. So in addition to the styrofoam, <laughs> we have, uh, let's see, toothbrushes can go in there. I uh, just tell you, it's, it's amazing how much more can go in your recycle, um, especially with the, the plastic. My favorite thing now is the cartons. They weren't recyclable a few years ago, 
and things change often. We, we want you to remember that things change often, and we're always looking to remind you. Cartons are recyclable now. ASAP packaging, cartons, all of that. The reason I tell you is, in addition to all these recyclables, we can allow you to put them all in your container. There's a couple of things that we need you to know so that you know why it's important for you to do that. So reducing, reusing, recycling. From the business perspective, what we need to you to remember too is the three R's for us or the three other procedures that go into that are collection, processing, and manufacturing. So that means that there is supply and demand, obviously. We can only accept uh, what we can move. I mean, we could list things all day long, but if we can't move it, then we can't accept it in our program. Nothing can stay in our transfer station longer than 48 hours. So all of the recyclables have to be sorted, bailed, and ready to go within 48 hours of, of getting into the facility. So we have to make sure that you're trying to buy post-consumer recycled material, like our residential carts that we provide for you, 100% post-consumer recycled material. Because we recycle them in the first place, and when we buy them, we make sure that they have used 100% post-recycled material. Rigid plastics like this, some people forget that a plastic bucket is a plastic bucket. So HDPE number two, right on the bottom, goes in the recycle. All those kids' toys in the summer that will have their plastic kid pools, their plastic kids' tyke slides, all that can be recycled. Just remember, all plastic. It's very important that you recycle all of your plastic. And then that brings me to glass. Oh boy, is it important that you recycle your glass. If you don't recycle your glass, it'll stay minimum 4,000 years before it starts to decompose. And then a million years if it's in the landfill. And glass can be so useful obviously as a beverage container or food container, but it's very, very important that you put in your recycle. It weighs a lot more than most of the other commodities, and we certainly need that weight to increase our diversion level. Um, aluminum. Aluminum is very, very recyclable. Most people only think of aluminum as an aluminum soda can. And obviously, aluminum is one of the most recycled materials. It is the one that never runs out. Um, sometimes you recycle, they recycle or produce um, some of the recyclables and they lose some of the material like some of the plastic, it's, it evaporates. But aluminum never wears out. You can recycle it over and over again. One aluminum can um, can be back on the shelf in six weeks of its purchase. That's how fast the aluminum gets turned over. So we want to be reminding you that all of your aluminum can be recycled, especially these pans that you use to cook with, to go to um, cookouts. Oh, my favorite, a license plate. So the next time you're in your garage, just look for that lousy license plate that you, you knew you should have had on your car, that this is a two-plate state. If you don't find it, you might want to look in your recycle container because that's where it belongs if, it's, if you're done with it. It goes right in the recycle. It's great. So I wanted to talk about aerosol cans because people ask me that all the time too, and I think it's funny because for me, I'm an expert, so I, I think I know everything. So I always, you know, it's just a given to me that I know that aerosol cans are recyclable. So let's see. Ah, it's ready for the recycle. The only time an aerosol can is not ready for the recycle is if it is, has, still has some content in it. If it has content in it, whoa, then it's hazardous and it needs to be treated as a household hazardous waste so that no one gets hurt, but it's great. I was talking earlier to someone about how many companies are engaging in the green initiatives and, and letting people know that they support what they should be doing, and that is the supporting of your recycling efforts. Makeup companies now are encouraging you to um, buy your makeup. Uh, a couple of them will have an incentive for you to bring in some empty containers and they'll give you a free one. Um, or you're always welcome to take it back there and let them recycle it. Or you can put it right in your recycle container yourself. It's the slowest thing ever. Uh, sometimes I often say that I should just try to tell you what doesn't go in the recycle because more often than not, it is going to go in there. Plastic bags. 
very recyclable. Some of them are number two plastic. Um, some of them are number four plastic. Um, they started making them a number four to add some weight to them. Often we tell you, uh, well, it took us 10 years to figure this out. It needs some weight to it. Number two plastic bag is very lightweighted. So years ago, we were frowned upon you putting them in your container because once it became airborne uh, and a gust of wind blew by, they would all go flying away. And then we had to be concerned about the storm drain. So we didn't let you put them in there. And then it took us 10 years and probably a lot of money to figure out, well, why don't you just have them stick bag after bag inside a bag? And voila, now we have a successful plastic bag program. Oh, and someone has brought me a bundle. Someone knows exactly how to do it. You just bundle them together and voila, it's ready for the recycle. No airborne issues there. So, but it took us years to figure that out. But that's why I say things change often. We want you to make sure that you're looking at websites for the cities, for the county, for Rainbow, to find out what has ha happened new in the laws that, or what markets have opened up so that you can recycle as much as you can. Oh, my favorite. Ice cream cone lights. The fluorescents are the best. So fluorescents are very, very good for the environment. And people sometimes don't realize uh, they are good. They save energy. They save money. They last a long, long time. But you can't throw them in the trash. They have to be treated uh, before they're recycled. And they have to go to a household hazardous waste location before they can be recycled. And some people just forget about that. Did you know that plastic potted plant, uh, pots are recyclable? So number two, you're gonna learn so much, I told you, just so much. This is recyclable. So the next time that you're out planting and doing what you should be doing for the environment, planting is the best thing that you can do. Even if you bone out and forget to recycle one day, as long as you go out in the garden, plant some flowers, or get together a group of people and plant a couple of trees, you're doing something excellent for the environment. Planting is great. So now, let me just figure out what else I can tell you about all these great recyclables before I open it up for questions and answers. Let's see. Can't think of a thing. I think I got it all. Now it's time for me to ans ask you if you have some questions. Will you please step to the mic? State your name too, please. John Collins. Is this on? Okay. It is on, John. Okay. No, they generally shut it off when I get up to the mic. Uh, <laughs> anyway, no, I have two quick questions. Okay. But you mentioned before that it's 50% is the mm -hmm. mandate that we must recycle. And we know that we have three containers. We have a blue one, a brown one, and a green one. Is the green one considered the, the part of that 50% or is it not? That is a very good question, John. And yes, your green waste represents 30% of your waste, and so yes, it is diverted from the landfill. It's processed um, and turned into compost, so it's not going to the landfill, so it is part of your diversion. Very good question. Okay, and the second question is, what happens if a recyclable article, like this, this one here, what happens if that was thrown into a brown container by mistake? Is there any kind of picking out those items that are recyclable out of the brown containers? That's another very good question. Now, John, I do things like this for reasons for that, so that everyone is well aware of what goes in what container. And obviously, the blue one is a very important one to remind people, because things are always changing all the time. And no, because we give you three carts, one for your recyclables, one for your green waste, and one for your trash, we, know we don't go through your trash to pull out your recyclables. So when in doubt, if you're unsure where that goes, we ask you to put that in your recycle and let us determine if we have a market for it. But those are two very good questions. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Rhonda Milliarini. Hi, Rhonda. Um, is small wooden pieces recyclable and also are these recyclable? Oh, Rhonda has a aseptic rice milk container. Um, which is very recyclable, Rhonda. It's in the category with the milk cartons, and they are recyclable as of a few years ago, and we appreciate you to put all those in your container. And little wood pieces, yes. Little wood pieces that have not been treated with paint or any shellac or anything. If it's small, it can fit in your green waste container. If it's too large, like... Um, 
unused firewood, then you want to bundle that and have us pick that up as part of your bulky item collection. But yeah, wood is diverted from the landfill as well as part of your green waste program. Thanks. Anyone else? Oh. Hi, I'm Annette, Hi. and I have an iRobot vacuum cleaner at home that runs on a battery pack. Oh, that's great. So how long have you had that iRobot? I was thinking about getting one, and, and then someone told me the best time to use it, because it is kind of noisy, was at night, and I thought that was not a good idea, because my husband might get up in the middle of the night and... I've had it for about a year. I don't use it that often. I still like to do it the old place. But, um, and I was afraid to run it down because I wasn't sure what to do with this. Well, I'm very glad that you asked me. And iRobots with batteries as well as any other battery is recyclable but cannot go in your recycle container. It has to be treated as hazardous waste. So we ask that you, as a matter of fact, I brought battery buckets for you today. Mm -hmm. um, but batteries are recyclable but that they have to be treated first so you have to bring them to the HHW um, household hazardous waste location that is located on the Rainbow Campus as one of our six material recovery facilities one is in uh, the HHW is included so thank you for bringing that and make sure you take that to the HHW are there any other places within the city that may have the buckets out that we could take or do we have to take it to Rainbow you have to take it to Rainbow although let me just tell you what I did find out Home Depot and Lowe's do accept batteries and fluorescents and plastic bags inside their stores. So if that, on your way to Rainbow, if you pass one of those and it's more convenient for you, then feel free to drop those off right at Lowe's or Home Depot, where they're making sure that you're doing the right thing for the environment. We have some buckets here at City Hall. Oh, City Hall has some buckets too, that's great. Yeah, most City Halls, um, because they're trying to find and make sure that there's a convenient way for residents to properly dispose of their batteries, usually have um, battery buckets inside. And for medicines that are class two narcotics, most police departments have a drop location because it has to be somewhere where law enforcement is close by in case someone wanted to reach in there and get their own prescription out. <laughs> That's not a good idea, but. Yeah, it's not a good idea. So that they're always in, in the presence of law enforcement to keep that uh, situation from happening. And what is your question? Oh, wow. She's got lots of stuff. I have a collection of things oh my. I wanted to ask you. About. Okay, I'm ready. You talked about the, the really good new light bulbs. Yeah. But I have... You have an incandescent... Light bulbs. An incandescent light bulb. And I'll be glad to tell you that... We've gone through our third phase of phase out for incandescence. Incandescence no longer will be manufactured in the United States of America, um, and those have to be thrown in the trash. Sorry. In the trash or household hazardous waste? In the trash. In the trash. Yeah, okay. incandescence go in the trash. All right. Yeah, because I still have some at home. And I know you mentioned small wood. Is this what you can say? That's small, small wood? wood. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Okay. And this is a number six. Number six styrofoam that goes in the recycle, yeah. Okay. This is the old thermal paper, and I can tear it. Does it go in recycling? It does go in recycle. But this is what I'm going to ask you. Make sure that none of your personal information is on that receipt because we it is it's sorted, it's bailed, and it's ready to go. And if there's any information that you don't want anybody to see, you may want to shred it and make sure that that information is taken off of it because if it's on there, someone might see it in the bail, but it is recyclable. Good. All right. And I can barely tear this to get, get it open. It's crinkly paper. It's crinkly. Looks more like plastic. You think it is? Yeah, it looks more like plastic. So what I would tell you to do with that, I would tell you to stick it in that bundle of plastic bags that you have or the other plastics that you have, the wrap um, from the water um, case, and make sure it gets in there. Okay. And this is like a food wrap, and it's like a saran wrap. I would put that in that bundle. Goes in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now, on the face of it, uh -huh. this is a paper card. Yes. But I'm so excited that you brought that. You have no idea how... Uh, 
this is uh, this is probably the best item I've ever had brought to my attention because no one believes me when I tell them. Cheryl, that card is recyclable because it tears. However, it does have a battery in it. So in order to put that card in your recycle container, you need to remove the battery. And then the battery needs to go to the household hazardous waste. So there's two components to that card. But no one believes me, and you don't know how many cards end up in the transfer station with the battery still in it. You've got to make sure that you take that battery off. They, that is the best one I've ever seen. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, give it to me. <laughs> they, they make me so happy, but I'm like, oh, do they know how they're going to dispose of that? No. Yes, right. Okay. And if somebody wants to get a battery, uh, battery bucket, bucket, which I know you have, um, can you bring some to City Hall and make them available? Sure. I'll be more than bring, to uh, bring a couple of sleeves to City Hall every couple of months if you need them to make them available, available and convenient for people to pick up. Um, it's a very good thing to have. My philosophy is if people know that they have some place to place those batteries, then they're less likely to throw them away mm -hmm. if they know they've got a place. So it's a, it's a good thing, and I'll be more than happy to supply battery buckets. It's great. They're, they're actually, uh, the County of Orange um, provides them for all of the Orange County residents. Terrific, and I'm sure yeah. they're recyclable also. They are, they're number two. Um, and the city has a market in the park now at Miles Square Park on Thursday evening, so maybe we can make them available there. <gasps> you come by the market, come by the city table, and n not tonight, but uh, <laughs> maybe next week. That would be a <laughs> and, great idea. we'll have battery buckets. That's terrific. I'm glad that you're will willing to Thank make you. sure that they're made available to everyone. So in your absence, I got some questions that were given to us from people that couldn't be here today. So one of them is this. What do I do with a toothbrush? Well, after you brush your teeth, you can recycle it. You certainly can. And you can, you can recycle it. And I hate it when you don't. Okay, what should I do with disposable razors? Hmm. Okay, so razors need to be treated like sharps that need to be treated very specially. So you can pull the, the plastic handle away and then you need to try to keep in a puncture resistant container the sharp part of it. So even the straight razors or the disposable razors, I would keep them in a coffee can until you've got enough to bring to the household hazardous waste drop off location. Um, those need to be dropped off. But Another thing I wanted to tell you is I, I don't know if you have a recycle container in your bathroom, but it's a great place to put one. All your lotion bottles, all of your deodorant sticks, all your medicine bottles, shampoo bottles, contact lens solutions, everything that you possibly could imagine goes in the recycle. And if you don't have a paper bag or a designated recycling container in the bathroom, you're missing out on some huge recycling opportunities because I guarantee you, no one is gonna take a medicine bottle or this toothbrush, oh wait, it's recyclable, let me take it out to the garage to the recycling container. No one's gonna do that. So make sure that you try to make one very conveniently located so it can capture all of those things that the kids may not want to run all the way downstairs and out to the garage uh, to recycle, but it's a good one. So that one was pretty good. How about this one? Huh? You gotta come to the mic. We have an inside question. I'm Nora. Hi, Nora. And um, I have two questions. Okay. Um, you earlier mentioned about batteries, but what about cell phone batteries? Cell phones. Cell phones themselves, as well as the battery, can go in the HHW or the battery bucket that you'll get. They can be, but they're electronic, so they can't go in the trash at all, um, and they need to go to the household hazardous waste. And so we'll give you a bucket to put your cell phone in today. And my second question is, um, my family eats a lot of lamppost pizza, and so what do we do with those bugs? Do they go trash? They got food, you know, cheese and stuff. Pizza in. boxes. I love to answer the question about the pizza boxes. So pizza boxes are listed on our list of recyclables, but I'll give you a little inside scoop. So when we collect our cardboard and bale it 
and get it ready for the secondary market. Um, we try to make sure that it is kept as clean as possible so that if they're going to make more cardboard out of it, we have no idea what they're going to make out of it, but most of them make more cardboard out of it, um, that it won't get ruined. It won't ruin their plans of making more cardboard. So we ask that you don't have it too saturated with grease, but that's why we tell you, Put it in the recycle, we'll determine if it's too saturated. Mo mostly, if, if anything, um, we'll take off the top and the sides. Um, now pizza parlors are making sure that they put something down so it captures most of that grease before um, it's saturated through, like a little piece of wax paper. Some are putting them on risers and doing all kinds of things to try to keep that box as clean as possible. But that's a very good question. But put your pizza boxes in the recycle. We don't want mass hysteria. Okay, thanks. So I have another question from, a, this is a good question. What do I do with unused matches? Ooh. So unused matches need to go in the household hazardous waste. They are, they're a fire element. And so you don't want, yeah, you don't want to put anything in either of your carts that could possibly catch on fire. So we wanna make sure that you probably take those uh, to the Household Hazardous Waste Collection site. Oh, this is one of my favorite questions. How clean should my recyclables be? I love this question. I know there's a lot of Donna Reeds out there. A lot of Donna Reeds who want to impress her neighbors in case her neighbors look in her recycle cart. <laughs> in case they look in there and they say, oh my gosh. Her recyclables are sparkling. Her floors must be fit to eat off of. You don't have to rinse out or clean anything. We tell you very little residue, and that's because residue could be, to John, it could be half a jar of peanut butter. And to Annette, it could be real residue. This is just where she scraped it all out and there's little residue in there. So we want you to know that all of your recyclables have to be empty, um, but they do not have to be washed out. For goodness sakes, I thought I brought it, but I have um, a plastic oil bottle. A number, it's a number two plastic, pretty blue plastic container, motor oil. So let me just ask you right now, would you rinse that out? No. So why would you rinse any of the other stuff? As long as it's empty, you don't need to rinse it out. So remember, whenever you go, or you want, unless you want the kids to do something. If you have nothing better for them to do, let them rinse it out. But remember that used oil or the oil container that I mentioned. Would you rinse that out? So compare that to anything else that you're, you have. You don't want to, you don't have to do it. We, um, we only tell you we give you rules and restrictions when our buyers give them to us. So people will say to us, do we have to take the lids off of our beverage containers? Because so-and-so around the corner or whatever says that we have to take our lids off. You don't have to take the lids off anything that you put in a rainbow cart, nothing. Even though these are two different commodities, the lid is a number five plastic and the can is steel, we don't, you don't have to separate it. The last time I checked, you weren't employed with us as a sorter, so we'll do it for you. We try to make it convenient so that your participation rate stays through the roof, so we don't ask you to do any of that. You don't have to separate any of this, none of it. Um, and again, it's for your convenience. We'll do it when, when it comes there. But your job is to make sure you fill it, and then we'll take care of the rest. So let's see. Someone asked me about fireworks. I guess because the 4th of July is coming up. I know. I was like, I was like well, what about them? Unused fireworks. Well, if you're going to buy them, use them. <laughs> so if they're unused, yeah, I would imagine that they're pretty hazardous. I'm, I'm thinking you might even want either the fire department. I would take it to the fire department, but probably not. The household hazardous waste would probably take it. I don't know, because it might be explosive. That's a good one. Um, I would check with the fire department first. Yeah, because they'll tell you exactly what to do, because I don't know. But I know it doesn't go in the trash or the recycle. That's for sure. Oh, someone asked me about potato chip bags. Hmm, I see a lot of heads nodding. 
People ask me about potato chip bags because they ask me two things. They think it's foil. So if it's foil, it goes in the recycle, right? All foil goes in the recycle, but it's not foil. It has some sort of silver lining in it, like paint or something, but it's actually a number seven plastic. So now you know. Potato chip bags go in the recycle as a number six, pla number seven plastic. So that's great. Now, I didn't bring up scavenging. Do you know what that is, scavenging? Yeah, it's, it's illegal. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Most of the time people will, you know, wonder why it's such a big deal. But remember when I told you that all the cities here in the state of California have to recycle 50% of their waste? So what happens is when they take out your recyclables, um, that's part of our count. So all we're picking up, we're picking up the trash and we're weighing it, and it's heavy. And then when you have fewer recyclables, we're not getting that balance that we need to report to the state of California that you're doing a great job with your diversion efforts. So, so that's why it's not a good idea for you to allow them to go through or rifle through your recycle container to take out those materials. Second of all, like I mentioned before with the receipt, um, there's a lot of things in there that you may or may not want them to have or see. And most often they'll dig through them and only get out what they want. In the meantime, if it's full, they'll throw things on the ground and not pick them back up. So not only is it dangerous or unsafe, um, and illegal, it's not a good idea at all. And we really do need to capture all of the recyclables because we are responsible for diverting 50% of what's generated in the city, not 50% of just what you generated or a neighborhood. It's everything that's generated in the city. So therefore, we need to capture it, divert it, measure it, and report it. So without some of those items, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're still hitting our goals, but we could do a greater job if those things were just left there for us to capture, collect, capture, and count as part of the diversion. So it's always good to do that. So, oh, I forgot to tell you about our CNG public station. Did you know we had a CNG public fueling station? And that our fleet of service vehicles is right at 100%. I think we have a couple of more trucks to convert, but they're on the campus. We just need to convert them. And once we convert them, our, hundred, our fleet will be 100%. And that each natural gas truck is equivalent to taking about 77 to 80 cars off the road every day. It's a very good thing. If you stand next to the truck today, um, you can have a conversation. You can take a deep breath of air. It's not as loud as the old diesel trucks, nor as stinky. Much better, much, much better. So are there any other questions? If you have none, then that concludes my Rainbow Remarkable Recycling Review. Thank you.